the grade 8 learners. In this video lesson, we'll have the continuation of our discussion about the particle nature of matter. With the same most essential learning competency, explain the properties of solids, liquids, and gases based on the particle nature of matter. We have the following specific objectives. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to First, describe the three states of matter at molecular level. Second, you have to explain properties of solids, liquids, and gases based on the particle nature of matter. And last, you have to draw a diagram to differentiate solids, liquids, and gases at molecular level. Before we proceed with our discussion, let's have first a recall of what you have learned in the previous video lesson. You have learned that all matter can be identified by its properties. And properties refers to the characteristics that describes a sample of matter. All matter has mass and volume. And with the experiments you performed, you were able to differentiate properties of solids, liquids, and gases in terms of density and compressibility. You learned that gases have the lowest density of the three common states of matter and are highly compressible. Solids, in contrast, are relatively dense and incompressible. Liquids are relatively dense and incompressible as well. Recall the properties of solids, liquids, and gases that you have learned in the previous lesson and start answering the illicit part. Given the following descriptions, identify them as part of solids, liquids, or gases. Now, let's talk about what is matter made of. Studying about what matter is made of involves dealing with very small particles beyond what our eyes can see. The idea about what matter was made of was proposed by ancient Greeks, philosophers, Leucippus, and his disciple, Democritus. They believed that nature consists of two things, atoms and the void that surrounds them. Democritus specifically believed that any piece of matter can be divided and subdivided into very small particles, but this process ended at some point when a piece is reached that could not be further divided. He called these particles atomos, a Greek word which means indivisible particle. This idea about atom were later challenged by other Greek philosophers, most strongly by Aristotle. The idea of the atom was not further explored until a little over two centuries ago when John Dalton presented concrete evidence that all matter is made up of very small particles called atoms. Atoms is the smallest particle of an element that has all the properties of elements. These are the smallest particle of which substances are made. And in grade 7, you learned about elements and that atoms of most elements have the ability to combine with other atoms forming molecules. Molecules is a particle consisting of two or more atoms combined together in a specific arrangement. It is an electrically neutral particle. Now, from the idea that matter is made up of particles, which you cannot observe with your naked eye, or even aided by a simple microscope, we'll be using drawings, diagrams, and illustrations that are representation of what is happening at a level beyond what your eyes can see. This is what science educators call the submicroscopic model. Please do remember that these are only representations of reality. In the next activity, you have to study the illustrations given and answer the questions that follow. So we have here illustrations 1, 2, and 3, which shows a hammered nail. The hammer nail and wood are all solids. 
In a solid, the particles are very attracted to each other. They vibrate but do not move past one another. Now, in the round area on the right, you have to draw a circle to represent the atoms or molecules in a solid. On the line underneath, write down whether atoms are very attracted, somewhat attracted, or not attracted to each other. We will proceed with the experiment. For this experiment, you have to prepare the following materials. Three plastic bottles, water, one balloon, and the plastic bottle cup. For the first setup, we have a bottle with balloon. So, putting a balloon on top of the bottle, what happens to the balloon when you squeeze the bottle? Again, what happens to the balloon when you squeeze the bottle? You have to answer the following questions. What do you think happened to the molecules when you squeeze the bottle and balloon expanded? For the next setup, we have bottle with a cup. So taking off the balloons and placing the cup on tightly, what do you think happens to the bottle? Even though the closed bottle with its cup on tight contains gas molecules, were you still able to squeeze the bottle? Yes or no? On the round area on the right, draw circles to represent the molecules of a gas. And under the drawing, write down whether the molecules are very attracted, somewhat attracted, or not attracted to each other. And for the last setup, we have bottle with water try to observe if you can still squeeze the bottle filled with water as much as when there was only air in the bottle Again, try to answer the following guide question. So, don't forget to describe how the molecules of a liquid act differently from the molecules of a gas. And thinking about your models of the molecules in a gas and a liquid, why do you think a closed bottle of gas is easier to squeeze than a closed bottle of a liquid? Matter exists in three main states of matter. Solid liquid and gas the only difference between the three is on how the particles are organized and the motion of the particle in this activity you are given the task to describe the organization and motion of particles by circling downward if it is low the right arrow if it is medium and the upward arrow if it is high the particle theory of matter describes the phases of matter at the microscopic level. It also explains the differences in the properties of solids, liquids, and gases. Let's try to compare the three. As we all know, solids have definite shapes and volume. And the particles of solids are packed closely together and vibrate a little in place but in fixed position. And this is because particles are held together by strong forces. So again, there is strong attraction of forces between particles. And particles of solid are incompressible. Gases, on the other hand, has no definite shape or volume. It only takes the shape and volume of its container. The attraction between particles of gases is negligible because of the large distance between them. As a result, particles can move at random direction very quickly and travel in straight line path. Particles of gases are highly compressible. 
liquid do not have definite shape but have definite volume. Same with gases, it also takes the shape of the container but is limited depending on the volume of the liquid. Particles are closer to one another compared to gases because the attraction between particles is stronger than those in gases. And particles move fast enough to overcome some of the attraction between them. Now, try to summarize what you have learned about the particle models of liquid and gases by completing the table below. You also have to answer the five guide questions. And for your evaluation, you are given the task to Construct a model of the particle nature of solids, liquids, and gases using appropriate materials. You have to do this in short band paper to be attached in your learning activity sheet. This will be the scoring rubric that will be used in grading your model. Now, let's wrap things up. Matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms moving with spaces between them. Atoms are the smallest particle of matter. And molecules are atoms bonded together. Solids, liquids, and gases varies in terms of the arrangement and motion of particles. Here is a table summarizing the characteristics of solids, liquids, and gases. In terms of shape, solid has fixed shape. But, liquid and gases assumes the shape of the container. In terms of volume, solid and liquid has definite volume. But, gases fills the volume of its container. In terms of viscosity or the property or ease of a material to flow, particles of solid do not flow easily while particles of liquid and gases flows easily. In terms of spaces between particles, in solid, there is very little space between particles. In liquid, there is little free space between particles. And in gases, there is lots of space between particles. In terms of force of attraction between particles, Particles of solids are linked by strong bands. Particles of liquids are linked by weak bands. And particles of gases are linked by very weak bands. In terms of energy or motion of particles, particles of solids have low energy. Particles of liquid have high energy. And particles of gases have very high energy. We'll be discussing about the physical changes in matter in terms of the arrangement and motion of atoms and molecules in the next video lesson.